Good morning, YouTube. It is a beautiful day, and I'm starting this video off showing you something that makes me smile, which is this cruise ship. It is docked outside my apartment complex. If you are new here, I live right next to a cruise port, and the ships come every couple days, and this one comes every four days to unload passengers and take on new ones. So this is my lovely view today. Hello YouTube and officially welcome to today's video. So I wanted to film a little bit of an intro clip here, let you guys know what you can expect from this video. So I did an Instagram live yesterday. So it was Saturday yesterday and I did an Instagram live just randomly. And um, I had had somebody ask me about like what areas I was really focused on right now with building. And so it, it then I ended up falling down this rabbit hole and I was talking a lot about like my training specifically. and. And so that brings me to today's video where I'm going to talk a little bit about my training approach given that I am in a building season. I'll talk a little bit too about my like where I'm at in my journey and my building phase because I realize I haven't really updated you guys on that in a little bit. Um, and I am also going to do my best to film as much as I can of my glute workout today. So it is a Sunday and I always train glutes on Sundays. I just have always done that. I love, love, love. I love going to the gym on Sundays because it's usually not super busy and for me it's just a great way to like set the tone for the week and i also i start my weeks technically on sundays because i do work on sundays so um i'm going to take you guys through a glute workout today and i'm also going to explain a little bit about my glute workout um and i'm also going to talk too because i talked yesterday in my instagram live about how i have really noticed a big positive difference in my ability to activate my glutes especially my upper glutes this building season um where in the past i feel like I've always struggled a little bit to really fully activate my glutes and only my glutes. Um, I tend to be somebody who my quads grow like weeds and my quads like to take over every movement I do. So I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about how I've actually changed that and how I've been able to only activate my glutes and take a lot of the emphasis away from my quads. So enjoy the rest of this video. Enjoy the training footage and I will catch you guys in the next clip. So I grabbed this Alani New Cherry Slush flavor um, on my walk home this morning from, I did cardio at the local gym a couple blocks away. Um, I've been in a routine of doing that, like walking there in the morning, doing my cardio, and then grabbing an energy drink on the way home as a little treat. So I almost feel like I'm cheating though on Ghost Energy because I am a huge Ghost Energy drink fan. It's usually all I drink. Um, and I just, I don't know, I was feeling something different today. And I love this flavor of Alani New. I don't love all their other flavors. Like they're just kind of average to me, but this cherry slush flavor, it's really sweet and it is delicious. So I'm getting ready to go to the gym and I just have to share a quick story. So it is thundering and who knows, it's Florida. It does look a little dark over there. It rains like every day here in the summer, but last week I was at the gym and it was actually on Sunday. So we could exactly a week ago and Oh, you saw some lightning there. Um, right before I left the gym, it was like a downpour and the road by the gym was flooding and it was actually really scary. I'll put a picture below. Um, it, this is not one I took, but it's one I, one of my friends um, took and I saw it on her Instagram and I screenshotted it. And that road, it was a literal lake. And it was actually so scary because I felt like I was like driving through a lake, but there was no other way out. So it's like, that's the only road you can use to get out of the gym. So I'm like standing here and I'm like, gonna look at the radar because I'm just hoping it doesn't pour down like it did last week. Because last thing I want is to get stuck at the gym on that like flooded road and have to drive through that because that was kind of scary. All right, getting ready to go to the gym. I'm wearing this Muscle Barbie oversized t-shirt. I always got so many like compliments on this shirt every time I wear it and actually funny story. So um, I believe these shirts are still available on the Angel Competition Bikinis website. So if you wanna check that out, you can use my discount code up above um, for a little discount on that. But I love wearing oversized tees on leg days. And a couple days ago, or no, I think it was last week, I wore this shirt and I wore it into the grocery store in the morning and I always see these like same two workers at the neighborhood grocery store because I live a couple blocks away from it. And I was talking to them and they saw I was wearing this shirt. So now they call me Muscle Barbie. Like every time I went there this morning and I saw one of them and she's like, hey, Muscle Barbie. So it's like my name now. But anyways, I did just check the weight with the radar too. And thankfully, fingers crossed, it doesn't look like it's supposed to rain a ton. It looks like there's like some scattered showers, but I don't think we're gonna flood, so that eases my nerves. I can go to the gym 
in peace and not worry about being flooded in. Um, so anyways, I am going to head to the gym. My pre-workout meal is eaten. I'm going to drive to the gym. Um, it's not that far, but when the weather is so like iffy like this, I'm just gonna drive. I don't wanna get stuck in a, in a monsoon on the way home. So I'm gonna go to the gym and I'm gonna get you guys some good footage. So stay tuned. All right, made it <laughs> right before it looks like it's gonna downpour. So we are gonna walk in. You can see the little gold sign right there, but I'm just happy I made it before the rain. All right, you guys, I'm gonna do a voiceover here. So um, what I am doing here is I am starting with some very lightweight sets on this hip thrust machine, which I have really grown to like um, a lot at my new gym. I feel just the range of motion really well, and this really isolates my glutes well. So I started with a very lightweight. I'm really just focusing on tempo, speed, and contracting my glutes here at the top and doing a couple pulses here at the end. And this is just how I warm up and activate my glutes before I really get into my heavy working sets. So now, You'll see in this video clip, this is one of my working sets. So I always feel funny getting strapped into this machine. It feels like I'm getting strapped into like a roller coaster or something. But obviously the weight was significantly heavier on this set. And you can see like from the get go, it is a challenge, but you can really see um, towards the end, you know, how much I am struggling at the end of my set, which is great. That's what you want in a working set. That's when you know you're being challenged. And I also really like just recording myself every once in a while like this, even if it's not for YouTube, but just to check myself. Like you can see, I look like I'm really struggling there at the last rep. So I like to be able to make sure I'm challenging myself and watching videos can be really helpful for that. So. Now I moved along to this glute press machine um, and I find that I feel a lot of glute isolation with this specific leg press um, or glute press. I don't really feel a lot of glute recruitment when I'm doing a traditional leg press, but the angle of this glute press is awesome. And I really put a big emphasis in my heels and I feel this so much in that glute area and not a lot in the quads, which is exactly what I'm going for since I'm really not trying to grow the quads any more um, than they already are. So after this, I moved right along to to a super set. So what I did here is I did a set of RDLs. I think I had 40 in each hand here. So I could definitely have gone heavier, but I'll be very honest. This is a very good weight for me. Um, and it's heavy, but it still allows me to actually feel like my glutes are firing and my lower back doesn't take over. If I, I find that if I go any heavier, my low back tends to want to take part in the movement. So I super set of this with, I went straight to lying or prone hamstring curl as you'll see and this next clip I was doing a pretty lightweight here and I just went to kind of burn out after my set of RDLs um, so I went straight into these after my RDLs no rest and then I rested after doing both of these back to back so basically I went to failure here um, and I think you can see towards the end as well you can see that I am slowing down and I'm really struggling um, towards the last couple reps which is exactly what I want to see here so now moving along to standing abductors so this is very similar to just like the seated abductor machine except this is a standing abductor machine I don't really feel it more than like the seated abductor machine um, but I always like to have at least one abduction movement in my workout to really target that part of the glute so I did a set of these and then I moved right along to one of my favorite isolation movements for the glutes and that is going to be cable kickbacks with an ankle strap the ankle strap is key you guys so if you're just looping your foot through like a, a cable handle it is not going to feel as good and as fluid as if you have an ankle strap with the ankle strap you're really able to drive through the heel and I just feel this exercise so well and I just love it I love 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 it so last but not least I finished off the workout with these standing single leg abductors using this machine. I don't know what the name of the machine is, but this was the last movement of the workout. So entire um, for this entire workout, it took me about an hour and 20 minutes, uh, but this was a pretty standard glute workout for me and it definitely killed me in the best way possible as you guys will see in this next clip that I filmed for you. All right, I am a gross gross sweaty mess. Um, I don't have any words. I am just fried in the best way possible. That was a really tough glute workout, but it felt really good. So I'm going to make my drive home. Got to stop at the store really quickly and I will debrief and catch up with you guys when I get home. Okay, my friends, let's chit chat a little bit post-workout now that I am 
said I am home, I feel a lot better. I was a little um, dead for like for lack of better terms. And <laughs> at the end of that workout, as you guys may have to, uh, been able to tell when I was sitting in my car, but I wanted to point out a couple things in this glute workout that you guys just saw. So this entire workout took me about an hour, hour 15 minutes, hour 20 minutes total. Um, so I'm really big on quality over quantity. And honestly, you know, I see some people, like I'll see some people's workouts and they're doing like 10 plus movements and I'm like, like, okay, that's just probably a lot of junk volume. So I'm really big on quality over quantity. Most of my workouts are normally like six, maybe seven uh, movements total. And it typically will take me like an hour to an hour, 20 minutes um, to complete. So I'm all for quality over quantity, having good warm up sets, having good workout sets, taking my rest periods, um, etc. So a couple things, um, you know, and one thing that I wanted to share with you guys that has been quite a game changer for me this season when it comes to activating my glutes, because I have quite honestly never been able to activate my glutes the way I have this building season um, and I think it comes down to a couple things so I would say the first thing is I have really scaled back and you know don't get me wrong and I'm not saying don't lift heavy that's not what I'm saying here but I also think and I think we can all you know attest to have being like I think we've all been guilty of this before where we lift so much weight to the point where like we you're just not feeling it where you need to feel it right so for example I could lift a lot of weight for hip thrusts but there comes a certain point where I don't feel it in my glutes anymore. I feel it in my quads. I feel it too much in my hands. I may feel it in my low back. And at the end of the day, it's like, okay, is that, how is that benefiting me, right? How is that, like, that's cool that I can lift all that weight, but how is that truthfully building my glutes? So I've really focused on like still lifting heavy, but trying to find that sweet spot between lifting really heavy, but also not compromising where I'm feeling the movement in, right? The same with RDLs. I could lift a lot heavier with RDLs than you guys saw in that video. However, if I lift heavier with them, I start to feel it more in my low back than my hamstrings and glutes, right? So that's been a game changer, like not ego lifting, as I say. Um, and then something that's kind of funny, and like I'm not saying this is backed by science, but um, sometimes I'll close my eyes when I am training just to really like tune out and focus on the muscles, recruiting the muscles that, you know, I, I know should be, re be recruiting in that set exercise. So again, that's not backed by science, but something that just helps me sometimes. And then I think the other thing too is really focusing during your workouts. So that's why you guys, I honestly, that's why I don't film my workouts a lot for YouTube because I find that sometimes it takes away from me just being laser focused in my workouts. Um, and you know, that's one thing I always stress to my clients is like, when you go into the gym, turn your phone on airplane mode if you need to, right? Like shut out the distractions so that way you can be 100% focused during your workout because if your phone's buzzing, if you're checking your emails, if you're responding to messages, sometimes that can really wreak havoc and, you know, take away from that quality of your workout. So um, anyways, and then last but not least, this has been a game changer for me this time around. I used to actually train, uh, I used to not be able to train my lower body like in past seasons and even in my last prep without wearing a weightlifting belt, I used to struggle with low back pain when I would train lower body. And honestly, I never wear my weightlifting belt anymore because I don't have back pain and I will 100% credit it to being more diligent with my hip mobility. So a lot of times, nine times out of 10, if you are having a hard time activating your glutes, because I hear that all the time from people, um, probably your hip flexors are just really, really tight and overworked and overstimulated. So the best way to combat that is to do hip mobility, do it every day, do it before your lower body workouts. Um, I didn't film my hip mobility that I did before this workout, but I did it and it is an absolute game changer. So that is one thing I would highly encourage if you struggle to activate your glutes. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that workout footage and I am going to wrap up this clip and proceed with the video. So this is my easy hack for cooking ch chicken. I will show you guys what the end product look looks like. Sorry, I cannot talk apparently. Um, but I get these frozen chicken tenderloins. The key is get tenderloins because when you get chicken breasts, I find that they just are, they're so big that you have to cook, almost like overcook the outsides in order for them to cook inside. So the chicken tenderloins are a good, good um, way to make sure that your chicken cooks really well and doesn't like it extra dry. So I'm just going to stick these bad boys plain into my air fryer and I will show you guys what the finished product looks like. 
All right, here's a glimpse of the chicken tenderloins right out of the air fryer. As you can see, they are still very, very steamy. So I just took them out, put them in this um, saucepan just because it was right, right next to the air fryer. Um, and then I'm gonna let them cool and then put them in the fridge. And this is honestly, this is how I, this is how I um, meal prep chicken. It is so easy. I get the fr uh, frozen tenderloins, put them in the air fryer, don't put anything on them, cook them and I wish, because I know some people are going to ask, Lexi, how long do you put them in the air fryer for? I wish you guys, I actually like had, like watched it, but I generally just put it at 375 and then I start checking at about like 12 minutes. I generally find that they usually take like 15-ish minutes to cook. It really just depends on the size too of the tenderloin. So um, then I put them plain into the fridge and then I just season them as I eat them. Season to taste or add like mustard or sugar-free ketchup. So voila, that's my little chicken prep hack. Okay, so recapping, or not really recapping, but wrapping up this video, I wanted to film a quick little outro clip. First and foremost, I hope you guys enjoyed um, the just training footage and just explanation of my glute training right now. I find that it's so funny because I think this is partly why I love just the sport of bodybuilding so much, but you know, I've been doing this for years and years now and you always like, there is always something every season, regardless of if it's improvement season, if it's a prep, there is always just something you find yourself getting better at or leveling up on, right? Um, that maybe you didn't even think you had the potential to level up, level up on before. So I feel like there's been a lot of little things recently with training that have just kind of clicked. So that's been exciting. Um, and then also I did want to touch briefly on my upcoming plans because I have been getting asked like Lexi are you getting on stage this year are you competing and I am not going to be getting on stage in 2024 um the way I look at it is honestly I feel like the, the year is almost over like it's almost August I know that's a little bit of an exaggeration it's not almost over but we have August, we have September, and then I don't know about you guys, but once October rolls around, I feel like the year just like flies by. Um, so I figured, you know, I have, I came into the year of 2024 thinking I would definitely get on stage this year, but the deeper we got into the season, the more I realized that I felt like I could definitely benefit from a longer growing season and I just don't really have a sense of urgency right now to like get on stage and I don't mean that in a way of like I'm not getting on stage I plan to definitely get on stage in 2025 hopefully earlier on in the season um but when I say I don't have that sense of urgency I no longer have that like oh my god I gotta get on stage I gotta get on stage like I realized that in order to benefit me long term, like I need to build and I need to grow. And I don't see there being a big advantage to me competing later this year, um, just because I do want to do national shows. And so there's really only like one national show at the end of this year being NPC Nationals in Texas. And then there's like a three month gap of like no shows really happening. So I think it would just be smarter for me to extend my growing season, start prep either at the end of this year or the very beginning of 2025. Probably I'm thinking maybe the tail end of this year just to have a little extra time and then to be ready early and to start with some spring shows and have all the national shows to choose from. So that's kind of what I'm thinking, but I'm very flexible if that timeline, you know, has to change, but just wanted to give you guys a little update there. Time is always on your side as a bodybuilder when it comes to building. I always tell my girls, like you really can't spend too much time building. I mean, maybe you can, but like truthfully taking extra time to build is never gonna hinder you or hurt you as an amateur athlete, right? Um, so anyways, I'm gonna wrap up this video and I hope you guys enjoy the content. If you have not already entered my giveaway, go to my last video my giveaway will be opened through the month of July and then I will announce the winner at the beginning of August um, and then probably my next vlog will be a Tampa Pro vlog because the Tampa Pro show is next week and I will be there all weekend so I will likely vlog for you guys there and then I leave for Texas the next week for a seminar and to go to the Texas Pro show I'm so excited to get to see a ton of my clients that are going to be there so all good things ahead so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will catch you guys in the next one